Hi, friends. Welcome to Foundation Files, an impromptu video that I wanted to film in speaking about the different foundation shades I have picked up over this last weekend. Wanted to make this disclaimer first. I had mentioned last month that I was more than satisfied with the foundations I already own and I wasn't in a rush to pick up the Hourglass Ambient Soft Glow, which is primarily what I'll be talking about today, as well as the House Labs. I got the House Labs too. I have a video covering the Hourglass Ambient and one of you has suggested that I go for shade number 11. In that video, I had reviewed shade number 12, which was labeled to be medium deep with neutral undertones. And I was surprised at how warm yellow this turned out to be. And you can see the footage where I wasn't happy well, let me put it this way. The shade is fine and it kind of works itself out throughout the day. I had it on for a few hours and that intense yellow undertone kind of like died down into more of a golden hue, which was welcome because it gave life to my complexion and it didn't look too out of place. But I thought there was an apparent difference between the yellow undertone on my face and the more neutral undertone for the rest of my body. And one of you have made a great point saying when my all body tone changes, the yellow will probably look a little more obvious than it does now. So I went for number 11 and 11 is medium with neutral undertones. I bought this from Nordstrom and this is crazy neutral. So <laughs> I noticed with hourglass foundations, I adore the finish, but this definitely is more neutral. And when I apply this over the weekend, depending on what light you see it under, it almost looked like grayish. And I'm not sure if it was because of the overcast or what have you. I did apply my makeup in front of a window, but look at that crazy jump from 12 to 11. I will say 11, a far better match for me than number 12. I prefer it. And although it could look a little dull because it is so neutral. It doesn't have that same golden hue as the NARS Syracuse does in the light reflecting foundation like number 12. Again, the color balances itself out throughout the day. When I wore all Saturday, by the end of the day, it didn't take on that same like neutral, neutral undertone it had when I first applied it. It kind of worked itself into my complexion and it looked not as neutral. And then I read some of your comments and one of you had said 11.5 worked well. So now I bought 11.5 from Sephora and 11.5, which I was flabbergasted because that is medium with warm. And I'm like, what in the world is warm if what I saw from 12 is considered neutral? So this is 11.5. And I guess in hourglass land, warm is considered to be peachy. Peachiness is nice because it does provide that brightening effect. It leaves my complexion looking a little more vibrant. I would prefer that tone to stay on the center of my face, however, for it to be all over my face and when I applied it last night, it looked a little too brightening. And if I had to choose between the three, it will be 11. And now I have three hourglass foundations, which I could have grabbed a sample, but Sephora ran out of the sample jars. I'm like, you guys, you really don't want to buy another foundation, but here we go. Did I have to buy 11.5? Absolutely not. And in the end, fam, I could mix all these together and find the right concoction. 12 and 11, I think, are the best cocktail for me. And if you're around my shade uh, foundation match, these two mixed together can be great. These two mixed together probably could be fine. I do feel bad returning them because, you know, I don't know what they do with used makeup and I don't want to add to the waste. 
And I just want to be clear that I didn't have to buy 11 from Nordstrom. I could have just worked with 12. 12 was fine. But when I saw how neutral it was, I wanted to give it a shot. I didn't have to buy 11.5, but I was curious to see how the more warm undertone will look on me. And I can mix and match all these foundations because overall, I do really love the finish of the ambient because it has this velvety dry down on the skin that makes it look even toned but not flat and dull. It just leaves behind an exceptional canvas and texture wise, beautiful to lay not only the hourglass powders on but other powders that I have in my collection. So I try to equate myself with the hourglass over the weekend, both with the formula and the different undertones that I now have. And again, the finish is exceptional. It does, I feel, have more of a foundation dry down than both the Pat McGrath and the NARS Light Reflecting, which leads me to also talk about the house labs. Now, the reason why I don't want to return any of the hourglasses is because I already returned one of the house labs foundation. I mistakenly picked up 340 medium cool, which let me turn to my notes. When I swatched it in store, it looked like it could work, but I think I was just way off. 340 medium cool is medium with cool golden undertones. This looked super orange on me. And because of that, when I applied it, I was so put off by the shade match that I didn't give the texture a chance, meaning I didn't give myself enough time to wrap my head around the actual foundation formula. And I just put it off right away. I even filled myself saying this. I feel myself talking about like, random makeup musings saying that I wasn't blown away by the house labs that I'll just return it but then I'm like you know what Alicia give it a shot find a shade match that actually looks good on you and because of that I did return an entire bottle of the house labs and decided to get 330 medium cool which is described to me medium with cool golden olive undertones this has to be one of the most dead-on shade matches I have ever encountered in a foundation, I have to say. It is crazy accurate. But look how neutral the hourglass appears when I swatch the house labs. Isn't that nuts? I appreciate the house labs for the golden but the olive doesn't make it as intense which i think works out in my benefit now compared to the nars which i didn't realize maybe i did and i was just too excited about the nars to mention this the light reflecting foundation is marketed to be like a skincare hybrid, just like the House Labs. And the House Labs is said to be medium coverage, weightless, clean, clean meat with the, you know, you know it. Fermented Arnica extract reduces redness, helps even skin tone. So they're really trying to harmonize skincare with makeup as we've seen from several brands now. And because of that, I see the House Labs as like an elevated BB cream. And I did wear it yesterday and I actually really like like not only the shade match, but I like the feel of the foundation. It definitely has more of a skincare element to it, just based on how it applies, how it dries down. Compared to the Hourglass, the Hourglass has more of a foundation set, meaning, again, it has more of that velvety finish to the skin, more of a traditional foundation in my eyes, versus the House Labs is more like a, a BB cream with a little more pigmentation and allows the skin to be itself in terms of not giving it a different dry down altogether is a very natural finish. And also the House Lab Skin Tech is made in Korea and that speaks volumes about the foundation's role in combining skincare and makeup because I feel that market is all about those goals. Let me swatch NARS next to the House Lab so you could get an idea of the undertone. I do still prefer NARS over Lady Gaga's foundation. Despite its similar role in being a makeup skincare hybrid, I still think it has more of a foundation-like finish to the skin. You can see more of the olive undertone from the house labs, and Syracuse just has more of that golden undertone. And to quickly revisit, the NARS Syracuse shade is medium deep 
with warm undertones, but I like Nars's interpretation of warm, it being a little more golden versus peachy, like you see here from Hourglass, or even like yellowish it's just it's just a strange color so i have the house labs on this side and i have the nars on this side i don't think you can tell which one is which and i really i do like the house labs and despite me liking the nars more slightly the house labs ain't bad but if you want more of like a foundation foundation that i feel has better a uh, staying power you might want to go for the hourglass but it just seems like the house labs might have better shade matches for you because hourglass lacks major nuance in their undertones which i feel makes it challenging to figure out which one you are so i thought why don't i try on the foundations again i know i showed you the b-roll but if you wanted to see the live application then i don't mind at all in you know taking this off and showing you all the foundations that i have so yeah i feel bad about returning more makeup when i already returned a whole bottle of the uh, skin tech and i'll use it because i've been wearing foundation every day especially now since we're entering uh autumn winter and i'm less inclined to wear foundation during the summertime i think now with the weather changing i don't mind applying foundation when it's just cooler overall going in with my good molecules just to prep the skin so what i'll do again is apply a shade on one side and then on the other. We're getting to these demos now. It's time for you to get in a little closer. <gasps> That's enough. All right, we're bare skin. Why don't I go in with 11 first? Because I do think out of the three hourglass foundations that I now own, 11 is the best match for me. So let's work that in and i still feel a round brush that is medium density with moderately long bristles is the best tool for this foundation and again i adore the finish i just think it covers up well without using a ton moves well across the skin just very easy to apply and again the finish i feel is velvety soft not matte or even soft matte probably teetering between satin and matte but it's is really great it reminds me of the lisa eldridge but the lisa eldridge dry down i still can't explain how i feel about how the lisa eldridge dries down it's similar but this has a little more coverage which probably why i prefer this over Lisa's foundation. I'm saying that now I might change my mind because I haven't worn Lisa's foundation in a very long time. So don't, don't tie me to that statement yet. That's how I'm feeling right now though. Let's look at 11.5 because I think 11.5 is interesting. When I wore it yesterday, it's, it's, it had like, again, this brightening effect that was too much for all over my face but I appreciated, you know, I appreciated the efforts. And you could see how different already this will look compared to 11. Again, I think Hourglass has the great texture for the foundation, but these undertones, man, like it's kind of nuts. So let's take this all over on this side. And there's definitely more of a brightening effect, I think. And compared to 11, again, I think what saves the neutral tone is the fact that I will apply cheek products, preferably on the warmer side purposefully to balance out the more neutral color. 11.5, you know, has more of that brightening effect. What do you think, fam? Do you prefer 11 or 11.5? I think 11 is more of like my actual match, but the problem that you probably will run into when it exactly matches again is a little bit of dullness because it doesn't have that same warmth definitely just as you see the swatch because look how neutral this is compared to all the other shades here but look how number 11.5 dries down so when it dries down there might be a chance that it could 
balance out to be all right. You know what I'm saying? So many things, so many things. I don't even know if this will be helpful to you, but who am I gonna talk about this with except with you? <laughs> Why don't we apply number 12 now on this side? Maybe because I'm applying it next to the more peachy undertone that the yellowness of it all can be better recognized. I wore the House Labs and the NARS to the gym and applied the Tiger palette, which to clarify, the Tiger palette that I bought from Hourglass was the customized version in you picking the compact and therefore the palette. If you were buying the palette as is, yes, the Tiger palette is the one that houses the deeper skin tone shades. I decided to put in the medium tone shades in my Tiger compact. I hope that clarifies a lot because people are like, I thought the Tiger, I'm like, yes, you're right, you're right. I customized mine because I thought the medium palette curation was better suited for my complexion. And I was right because they had the Tiger palette sold as is with the deeper shades at Sephora when I was shopping for 11.5 in House Labs. And I swatched all the shades and there was only one that I absolutely loved and that was Iridescent Rose. All the other shades, even the Transcendence, I think that's what it's called, the finishing powder, sure, I could have worn as a bronzer. The other shades were very coppery orange and those are beautiful shades. But now I tend to gravitate towards the wine berries and the roses. So I'm happy I stuck with palette number one. Is it number one? I hope so. The one with the medium tones and I did not buy palette number two. So yay, okay, 12. 12, 12, 12. I was going to return 12. That was my initial reaction when I tried 11 and saw how, yes, it was a better shade match. But then I returned the House Labs Tech Foundation and I just was like, you know what, Alicia? That was one L. Try not to have several L's, okay? You know, if you have to wear as much foundation as you need, I would not recommend anyone to buy three foundations of the same type and brand. I just feel bad returning used makeup. But anyway, here we go. So this is 12. Mm -hmm. Can you tell that there's a little more like yellow golden going on on this side and this is a little more peachy, maybe? I don't know. Again, I do love the finish and the fact that it dries down fairly quickly and it looks beautiful under powders. And I can wear all these shades. The lighting is not ideal right now. Maybe, hopefully, you can see on camera the slight differences in undertone. For some reason, when I filmed the other day with 12, it just had a different look and maybe that was because I did film during a different part of the day for sure. So let me quickly apply the house labs for you and I'll do so all over my face. And I actually like to apply the house labs with my fingers. Not that you have to, I think, you know, choose whatever tool you feel appropriate for your skin type and for what finish you wish to achieve. But given that the skin tech is a skincare, uh, makeup hybrid, kind of like I think what Charlotte Tilbury wanted to do with her beautiful skin. I feel this will be more successful because a beautiful skin, I thought many people felt looked heavy on their skin. I actually like the beautiful skin, but some thought it looked too obviously made up and too heavy. I'm gonna put on 330. And again, I just think this is a great undertone for me. And also one pump, is more than enough coverage for me. Has really great feel on the skin. It's like creamy and maybe not like a moisturizer, but it has a great consistency where if you did want it to apply with your fingers, you most absolutely could. It has a really nice finish also where you don't need a ton for that covering. If you wanted more coverage, then you could pump out a little more and maybe use a smaller brush to address those areas. But the Skin Tech has like more of a slightly radiant finish. 
a little more luminous than the hourglass the hourglass has more velvet to its dry down it doesn't have that same luminosity left behind so if you're one to prefer foundations or complexion products that are more skin like and finished then you might prefer the skin tech over the ambient i want to tap in some uh concealer and before we wrap this video i wanted to share another purchase i made with the hourglass foundation shade 11 that i bought from nordstrom i happened to pass by the gucci counter i've had my eye on the gucci blushes for sure because the packaging is adorable but I only bought one shade. I was surprised at this pick because originally I thought rose, it was a rose beige, I forgot the name of the shade. I thought that would be the one for me given the shade photos from Sephora on the model looked pretty warm. In person though, the swatch was super cool, almost like gray undertone. I'm like, no. I can't wear that. I feel like I foundationed out my lips, so let's put on some House Labs lip oil. Okay. I did get a little Gucci. This is a foundation video, and I have a little bit of a Gucci stash, and I'm planning on filming with those products just so you can see the different shades that I have. I bought 06 Warm Berry because if you are around my skin tone, I feel this is the one worth getting and forgetting all the other ones. The pinks were pretty. They were like corals, light apricot, a bubblish pink, a warmer pink. Warm berry definitely is the blush of the season. Let me tell you. I treat it as Paradise Venus, the one and done blush shade that does it all. Sculpts, add dimension, and flush at the same time. So just taking warm berry here into the hollows and wrapping it all over my cheeks, bringing it a little high. And I did not set the skin tech. Maybe if you're oily, you might have to. And keep in mind, I have been taking off and reapplying foundation earlier this morning, also now. So naturally my skin is on the drier side and having some of those skincare benefits from the house labs, you know, helpful, helpful in these circumstances. So isn't Warm Berry the prettiest? I think it's the perfect tone for the season. It's not overly pink or, listen, I love my terracotta, but not so warm either that it looks summery. I think it's so great for autumn winter and a one and done shade where if I don't feel the need to apply bronzer, this shade does it all. And it's matte without looking too flat, has really nice blend on the skin, doesn't look even, doesn't catch on the foundation. And the skin tech looks great. And I prefer the House Lab Skin Match over the Hourglass. <laughs> even though 11 is my match, I just like the fact that 340 is more golden than just olive, yeah? Whereas 11, I feel it's just really, really neutral and could tone down the brightness of my complexion. But now that I have three hourglass foundations, yes, and I shouldn't feel bad about returning it. So I'm back and forth about keeping all of the hourglass foundations because I have huge purchases and I technically should not be keeping three foundations. I should just choose one. So yes, I went on and on feeling bad about returning them, but I just need to get over that and return the foundation. Hourglass has the return policy that's 30 days, even if it's used, Nordstrom does as well. Sephora does as well, even though I already returned the house labs. I will be keeping the house labs because I actually really like it. I think it's easy to apply, skin-like and finish, nice coverage also. Now it's just a matter of deciding which hourglass foundation to keep. <laughs> I'm leaning towards 11, even though it's super neutral. I feel these two could look a little out of place when I don't look as tan. Maybe the peachy and yellow undertones will appear more apparent and neutral will look more and more like my skin tone. And I can use powders to slightly shift. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. Forgive me, everyone. I don't want to be an example of just buying and returning all the time. I rarely do this, but it's one of those circumstances. And I'm sorry in advance if you're really upset with me. 
I'm sorry. <laughs> so I think I will be returning number 12 and keeping 11 and returning 11.5. And hopefully this helped in you seeing the different swatches. If you were deciding on which hourglass foundation to buy and you could not make your way into a store, if you've been following my foundation matches for a while and they've been working out, I would also go with number 11. If you are more neutral than anything, if you have a little more golden and then some neutral, maybe I would go for 12 because 12 wasn't bad. Again, when I wore it for a few hours, it worked itself out. It didn't look so super yellow that I was like, hmm, that looks a little crazy. But I feel I can manipulate 11 a bit better than 12 when my body color starts to change, especially now, you know, I'll lose my tan and all that stuff. And 330 Medium Cool from the House Lab Skin Tech, if you are my shade, I will get 330 Cool. This, I feel, is a great match for me and hopefully it will be for you as well. So let me know fam what you think down below. Again, I think that's what I'll do. Love the Gucci blush. And yes, it does have fragrance. I'm pretty much opposed to fragrance in cosmetics. It's not that overwhelming though. I wore it for a few days and the fragrance didn't stick around. I didn't undergo any strange reactions but the color and the finish is just perfect. So let me know your thoughts below. I will see you down in those comments. And until then, that is a wrap. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this video helped. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up or maybe consider subscribing to my channel. And until then, I will see you on here again with another review tutorial, foundation extravaganza, or Gucci beauty video. Take care and I will see you again soon.